Hey there, what's happening guys? Elton here. So uh, recently, uh, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks ago, I was going through my vast, vast collection of photos where I have thousands of photos of old cars to show you what a sicko I am addicted to these earth-killing, gas-guzzling, polluting machines. But hey, you know, if you're going to pollute, you should pollute in style. And when I mean style, I mean more than practically any modern car or truck. Uh, and, and thousands of, and millions of people even would agree with me because, I mean, these cars, even this four-door white-legged Buick was really uh, the status symbol of its time. You know, I mean, this car was, you know, your quintessential North American family car. If, uh, uh, you know, a Buick like this or something else like this was sold overseas, then, you know, maybe it belonged to a diplomat or an ambassador. Uh, so because you know, generally the case speaking for most other countries excluding even South America uh, if someone owned a vehicle like this or maybe a head of state or government official uh, they, they were you know they were very important and um, you know there were also Ameri many Americans abroad military and so forth and I'm trying to get these in the best lighting here um, and I'm looking at what I'm looking I think I don't like the setting so I'm gonna maybe play with this a little bit more I don't know. I don't like the tone of my skin. It looks fucking yellow for crying out loud. I'm not Chinese, you know. I'm as white as they get. I'm gonna take a look at this. Okay, I think this is good here. I got a uh, more of a manual than automatic operation at 800 uh, uh, ISO with automatic white balance. Okay, so let's not waste any more time. Even though I've been doing a lot of that lately because I'm still recovering, of course, from last week's operation on last Thursday of uh, the uh, to possibly remove any uh, remaining melanoma cells you don't know melanoma melanoma is a cancer and that's the most uh, deadliest cancer there is yay anyway i shall return to former glory i feel my energies come back there last day or two so uh anyway so whatever uh let's uh so I got this idea, like I sang, to make this video because I was going through my photos recently, my vast, vast amount of photos which are in my, my room. And, you know, I'm going through them and I'm like, you know, I've made videos where I do compilations of photos I've scanned, you know, over the years or years ago that I took, you know, in cars of Cuba or trucks or 50s cars and stuff. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm looking through this. I'm like, man, you know, I've been making videos for fucking over 10 years now or just about. Yeah, and I'm like... Uh, one of the reasons why people, you know, why I have 24,000 subscribers and counting is because people like to hear me talk. And it's true that, you know, when it comes to videos, it's much more interesting to get a narration uh, of what you're watching than just watching something. You know, I mean, I get how some people, when it comes to the trucks or buses I film, stuff like that, they don't want to hear me talk. About, you know, hey, but there are people who want to. And, you know, I go both ways. So anyway, so I, found, I said to myself, I'm going to find as many pics as I can in my old, good old 65 LeSabre. And then uh, put them in a chronological order from the oldest to, you know, to the newest, okay? So, uh, okay, so let me see here. Now, what you're looking at, this picture and this picture, all right? And I think the next picture, yeah, okay, these pictures, these, I think, were the first pictures I took of this car, okay? This was back in Montreal, here in Montreal, in the Roxboro, uh, part of the city in the West Island, we call it in the Burbs, the suburbs, western part of the city, and at the time, I was in Scouts, right? And my Scout leader, who pretty much became my friend, had this Buick. And 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 here it is uh, in his backyard, as you can see up in blocks in about, um, I think it was 93 or something, maybe not, maybe later, maybe 97, you know? And, and this is when I was not car spotting full time. And he lived on uh, with his family on 14th Avenue, and he was a real pioneer uh, to the community. You know, he was a real pillar. I mean, we did, we did dog shows and and paper drives and food drives. A real pillar to the community, as they say. That's what I want to say. And oh, by the way, if you're wondering about all this stuff here, this is just from you know removing ads from magazines and stuff like that, and pictures, so, and cutting things, and so. Uh, I, I just, you know, the first time I saw this car, we would have our annual meetings in Roxborough, you know, where I grew up as a kid from 91, uh, sorry, from 84 till 91. And my dad, when he got the 84, uh, when he got the 79 Delta 88, uh, Ford or sedan, uh, in 84, uh, that's what really one of the components to going gaga with these big American cruisers or family cars, if you will. And, um, 
So I think a few years later, um, we moved to Roxborough from so Saint Louis de Terrebonne. Yes, it was called Saint Louis de Terrebonne because it was so so small at the time; they didn't even have a hospital. And uh, we moved to Roxborough in '84, and my parents enrolled me, my brother, in the Scouts. And the uh, like, you know, a lot of kids at the time, you know, it was meaningful. You know, we went camping and did things and paper drives, like I said, and, you know. And um, anyway, so oh, it's going to get tiring to hold this. <laughs> You know, it's not like I'm doing this like early in the morning when I'm, you know, had my two, three cups of coffee and I'm full of energy and let's take out today. No, 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 this is evening time. It's like 8.30 and I'm like, eh. but I've been wanting to do this. So I was like, get her done, get her done. And uh, so anyway, so the first time I saw this car, we would have our, our uh, meetings at the church. Uh, I guess it was called the Roxborough Baptist Church, I think. I don't know, something like that, Catholic Church. And uh, we had our, our, our meetings, I think, every Monday and I started with my brother, we started off in cubbies, cubbies or cubs, if you will. And then after that, you know, when you get to uh, whatever, high school years, you go into scouts. And, you know, we had the green shirt and all that. And I was very proud of that. I loved that. I loved the green shirt and the, the sash. You had a sash, you know, and the, the, the... I still have my beret, for crying out loud. I still have it. It doesn't fit anymore, but, you know. All right. So anyway, getting to the Buick... So one day it's summertime, it was a hot, beautiful, sunny evening, the sun was low, if I remember correctly. I mean, because I have a photographic memory. I mean, taking thousands of fucking photos helps your memory too, believe me. And, and I go to my meeting and I see, I'm walking along on the sidewalk towards the doors of the church and I see this Buick and I'm like, holy fucking shit. Like, look at the size of this thing, it's amazing, it's enormous. Now, mind you, I think a year, a year before or two, something like that, I don't know. Around that, that, you know, in 84, Ghostbusters came out. So that was another one, another uh, component to me being enamored with this chrome and these huge American cars that they'll never make again. Never, 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 never. And I see the Buick here and, you know, with its W-shaped front end and also the W-shaped rear end. You know, this was a really a, a GM styling thing as well as the, the side uh, the styling uh, with the hump here it was called a Coke bottle siding. Because if you look at a a Coke bottle from the side, it looked like that. So, you know, the Impala, the Chevy, the Pontiac, Bonneville, Parisian, whatever, they all look like that except the Cadillac. Cadillac was more square, but again, w the same width, you know, and GM quality and all that. So, uh, I, I never forgot about this car. I never remember uh, particularly, there was an incident, so to speak, well, incident. we were going to a camp like we do every year, you know, and uh, we're going to, uh, man, we're going far. We're going to Saratoga, New York. And uh, it was, and we were leaving in the morning, you know, whatever, I don't know what time, eight, nine. And it was friggin' pouring rain, man. And uh, there was another, sometimes we would go to these camps, rarely, but sometimes with another um, uh, scout troop, you know, I don't know, they were from DDO, Dollar de Zormo, which is next to Roxborough, something like that. And one of the leaders, the guy, he was a really friendly, nice guy. He had a, a suburban, really nice suburban, typical brown and white, you know, whatever, 85, six, something like that. And, and oddly enough, Justin Trudeau has or had one. I know, I saw it. I saw it years ago. I took a photo of it. It was lifted. And, uh, but, you know, Ralph had the Buick. It's a fucking pouring rain. And uh, actually, come to think of it, no, it was like a Friday, I think late afternoon, something. I don't know, four or five, early, early fall. And, um, but I wanted to go down there in this Buick, but the Buick were for the Ventures, the kids that were a notch up from Scouts. So, you know, you know, talking about guys like 16, 17, all that, maybe even a couple of girls, didn't seem to matter at that time, uh, you know, for Ventures. And um, so I, we take off and I'm in the, the Suburban. I was crying. I'm not kidding. I wanted to, to go so badly for a ride in that fucking Buick. I mean, I had a good look inside when I saw it, whatever, the first time. And I was like, wow, I was just bedazzled, but more on the inside in a, while, in a moment. And yeah, me trying to make this short. Yeah, right. So uh, these are pretty much, well, they're not vintage photos, but they're getting there. You know, like I said, this is like 97 and I wasn't photographing much at the time. Uh, that took a while to happen because whatever, I think maybe, you know, I had a strong fl click of friends. One of our friends killed himself in 95, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so we go to the camp and in Saratoga and then Again, I, I wanted to, I don't know, I was too shy. I don't know why. I guess I was so painfully shy as a kid. I, I didn't want to ask uh, to um, to go for a ride in that, to ride in that Buick, you know. And, uh, yeah, and as you can imagine, by the way, I had a strong rapport with my old man, you know, because uh, 
he had the Delta 88. You know, man, they went, actually, my parents went from a fucking shitty, what was it, an 82 Volkswagen Rabbit to a 79 Delta 88. What a contrast, you know? That shitbox, fucking stupid rabbit spent more time, I think, at the garage than in the driveway or streets. I remember riding in the rain one time with my mom, my, my, and my, speaking of pouring rain, I went with my mom, her friend, the pouring fucking rain, it's like, whatever, we're in Laval, we used to live in Laval, and, uh, and, uh, the, the freaking wiper just flew off, I think, at an intersection while the wipers were going, you know. Anyway, so, um, I took this picture, these pictures here, and, and Ralph's, uh, the owner, you know, had the car, he was my scout leader, and, and this car, by the way, was affectionately known by some scouters and even in other troops that knew about it. They called it Ralph, they called it Ralphine because, you know, my friend who owned it, his name was Ralph and Christine, you know, because it was a mean looking car. I mean, look at that grill. It was a mean looking mutter, man, because back in that day, you know, you made cars mean looking. The better, the more ferocious they were, chances are the better they sold. And if you don't like that, well, you bought a Ford because Fords were generally, uh, out of all the types of American cars, they were really the, uh, uh, the most safe in terms of styling. Uh, this photo in particular, I love this one. One of these days, uh, I want to maybe just frame this or get this enlarged or something because this is one of the reasons why I love the fucking car. Okay, I love everything about this car, right? And I'd love to get another one or buy this car back. More on that in a while. And I, but this particular angle of the rear wheel well and you know the hump of the body and the lines and then to the rear tail lights, ah, ah. It's just magnifico. It's it's perfect, and on top of that, the hubcaps. If the hubcaps, not alone, were the hubcaps were the same as the '63 Riviera, which was the sporty looking luxury coupe, and it had the same fucking hubcaps. If that wasn't cool enough, the styling, especially from the side with the crease here, with the trim and the the shape of the the wheel wells like this, all this here was just like exactly like the '63 to '65 Riviera. And by the way, I should say on that note. They made like 40,000 of these 65 Buick LeSabre sedans, which is a lot, right? It's tons. But how many do you think survive, really? Usually the golden rule when it comes to classic cars, like it's like 5 to 10% survival rate, survival rate of a certain, most cars, because they rusted the shit and were destroyed and crushed and turned into Toyotas and whatever. Um, I lost my train of thought. There's so much to say about this car. I mean, pfft. You know, and this is this is the you know this is the reason why I absolutely love this car. The dashboard uh, was a, to me so cool. It was so American. It was a work of art. You know, you had this typical um, fuck. I always forget the name of it. It was a really popular green uh, in the '60s, uh, specifically early mid '60s. You know, um, I, I always forget the name of it. Seafoam green, or I don't know what. But anyway, yeah, there were seat covers on the car. And I should mention to you that when I bought this car in uh, 99, the car had fucking, oh my God, I, I think it had almost 300,000 miles on it. Because, the you know, at that time, the odometers in Canada were in miles, not kilometers. And at that time, on the really old, the old cars, the really old cars, the speedometers only went up to 99,999, and then they would start over again. Yeah, and... Um, with this car man and then you know it's funny I, okay so to continue what i was talking about here's the engine was a 310 wildcat v8 uh it was known as a 310 wildcat but it was actually and for years i wondered about this because i had to research it my book i used to have called uh it's i don't know an encyclopedia of american cars uh, 1939 to 89 something like that you know pictures and technical but this was a 300 cubic inch so in other words it was a 4.9 liter uh v8 motor uh, and it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was a two-speed transmission, hydromatic, um, two-barrel carburetor, and it was uh, 200 horsepower. Um, now, what else did I want to say? You know, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's I mean, I'm so glad I took all these photos, and because this car to me was just so epic, it, it meant so much to me, uh, not just, I mean, you know, like I said, we went to scout camps with it, and, uh, you know, there was uh, one time, um, you know, th sorry, that's what I want to say. Coming back from that, that, that camp in Saratoga in, um, I'm going to say 91. And it fucking pissed rain, I think, the whole goddamn weekend, come to think of it. And and then it stopped when we left on Sunday, and it was a hot, muggy day. And I got to ride in it because, again, I was too afraid to, to ask Ralph if I could go, for, you know, come with him and go for a ride, you know. I and mean, people love this fucking car. Who wouldn't want to love riding in this this bohemian, you know? And um, 
Again, by the way, still sitting in the backyard this year too. And so I got to ride in it. And even though it's hot and fucking muggy as hell and cloudy, you know what? I just loved it. It didn't damper my spirits. You know, I, well, mind you, okay, it was uncomfortable. But there will be other times where I rode in that car. Shit, I remember one time Ralph came to pick me up at my place, pulled in the driveway with it behind my dad's 79 Delta. And again, late 80s, and we went to go see a movie in Dorval, at Dorval Cinema. You remember Dorval Cinema? If you fucking remember Dorval Cinema, man, you are as old as me or older. Old as the hills, as they say. <coughs> Beautiful summer day. <sighs> you know, sometimes when you get reminiscent, it gets kind of, you're proud, but you're kind of sad because it's like, man, am I ever, you know, I love this car so much. It's like somebody, like as if it was somebody, like a friend. And as much as, you know, my friend Ralph, who's coming up right here, uh, this I took when we were in Alberta, coming back from Jamboree and uh, this Canadian Scout Jamboree in, um, in uh, Banff, Alberta, in the Kananaskis Mountains. And here we are, I think south on highway, whatever the fuck, in, in the 85 Celebrity. So this was Ralph's Daily Driver, and that's Ralph Thurston. He's had, I always thought he had such a cool name too, Thurston. You know, that's such a, like Thurston Harris, you know, the guy from 1957 had his hit Little Bitty Pretty One, you know. Little Bitty Pretty One, come on and talk with me. Imagine listening to that in this. Oh, I never had the chance. Anyway, more on that in a while. So, uh, Ralph was, um, I think he was, uh, well, let me see. Um, he thought he was 53 and 97 minus 4. So yeah, he was 49. And, uh, you know, the guy was in good shape. He didn't smoke. I don't think he drank, really. And he worked at Molson, oddly enough, not far from here in old Montreal. You know? And just, and it's funny, what the thing, one of the things, there were two things I always was so impressed with him. He was like my mom. He was so friendly. The guy was super friendly, always cheerful, and always willing to help, and, you know, a, a take charge kind of guy. You know, we get to the fucking... Uh, the, the, the camping site somewhere and start right away putting the, the, the tent together, you know, then maybe prepare, uh, you know, the Coleman fucking stove for soup. I don't know. You know what I mean. Anyway, so moving on. So fast forward to uh, uh, 2000. 2000. We'll put this stuff away here. Not away, but move it away. And here she is. I'm working in 1999. I think in March I finished training for uh, to do a house cleaning for seniors. I glory up. Psst, psst. Anyway, so, um, and then uh, one day, I don't know, whatever, between jobs, between clients, I don't know, whatever, I'll go into this uh, multi-mag someplace, I pick up one of the auto hebdo magazines, you know, because the internet at that time hadn't gone like full on, you know, for sales of, of cars or whatever. And I see the ad for this car, I'm like, son of a bitch, now I'm going to tell you something, Ralphie boy here, he died, like I said, sadly young at, in 1997 at 53 of prostate cancer, and I remember... One time, we're coming back from a camp, I think in 92, from Cap Saint-Jacques, which was like, where there was still a few farms near Seneville there, what a beach weekend, and he drives me back to my place, which happened to be nearby, uh, after my parents divorced, my mom bought this, you know, we moved on that Bebo Street off Dick Azure and Gwen, and she bought a, um, ah, fucking condo, whatever, and so he drives me home, I remember one time, I think he told me, he knew how much, he, he knew how much I loved that car, I mean, who the hell cries if they don't get it to go for a ride in a car, that's a car guy, man, I am a car guy, and so he told me he was going to give me the car, it was in his will, and, um, you know, and anyway, um, that didn't happen, you know, and, and actually even, um, uh, a month, uh, no, sorry, what was I, uh, even uh, like a, a month before he died, I went to go see him and the guy was on the couch, and a poor fucking guy was in so much pain, he was, had, like I said, had prostate cancer, and he tells me again, and I quote, hey Elton, you know I'm going to give you my Buick, eh, and you know, he talked, it's funny because the guy I think was from Farnham, you know, but he talked like he was an American, he had a, I don't know, he had that American type accent, it was just so funny, it was different, he was, you didn't forget a guy like this. You know, and uh, so you can imagine not only that I love that car, but to have the honor to buy that car to belong to a friend of mine who, like I said, was so well liked and respected. I mean, I can't even imagine how, how much he must have been liked and respected of this job. So anyway, so a year after that, I think 2000, like I said, I uh, or maybe that year, maybe it was 99. Fuck, I can't remember now, 99 or 2000. I think it was in 2000. 
I call up his wife, uh, Ralph's wife, and I, you know, I tell her, obviously, I'm interested in a car. I go see with my friend Jeff at the time, my friend Jeff Chandler, who was also from Purifone. And, uh, and there it is, you know, still in great shape, had been sitting up on blocks for years in his backyard. But he never put a cover, but Ralph never put a cover on the car because, A, he told me, and he was right, it, it keeps humidity in, which is not good. Same reason why I put the car up on blocks, because if you put on a, a car on blocks for long-term storage, especially outside, and these cars, these fucking old GMs, like, in those years and earlier, they were low, man. They, they were low, and they, that's why they were stylish, but that's where the humidity collected underneath between the, the floor frame and, and the and the ground, and just, they would just rot like fucking crazy. And even the frames, people think, oh, these old cars, they're all metal and tough. Yes and no, because the frames were not strong enough to support all that fucking weight. I mean, this car here alone weighed like, what, 4,500 pounds? So, uh, anyway, I struck a deal with uh, with uh, Ralph's wife. Her name was Carmen. That's another nice name. You know, nice lady. But I didn't, and I told her, I said, and she wanted, I don't know, a thousand bucks or whatever, more than that. I think 1,500. And, you know, I, 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 I looked the car over. It still looked good. Just really dirty, as you can see. Turned the key to fucking some, I don't know, neighbor or whatever, got the car running and all this. And it ran, but man, it needed, she's like begging for a tune-up, you know. It was like running like rough, like whoa, 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 whoa. Just, anyway. And uh, so I, I told her, I'll give you 800 bucks. And I slipped it in there. I'm like my dad. I'm not going to fucking tell her I didn't know. It's like, hey, listen, you know, you were, you know, I was supposed to get this car, uh, you know, in the will. Ralph left it for me. And she's, I don't know, she didn't say anything, whatever. She needed the money for a fucking garden, for her garden or whatever, where the car was parked. But, you know, that's money for you. You can fuck things up big time with friends, you know, and family. So here's yours truly. With Jeff, my friend Jeff Chandler on the on the on the uh, on the side. Jeff, by any chance, if you see this, what's up, man? Get in contact with me, buddy. Hope, hope I want to know you give your give your news there since I'm not on stupid Facebook anymore. I know you were quite the vagabond for a while. And Jeff, at the time was uh, let me see. At this time, I was uh, 2000 uh, minus 18. I was uh, yeah, like 22, and. Uh, no, wait a second. Hang on a sec. 22. What the hell am I talking about? I wasn't fucking 22. I was like 20, uh, yeah, 20. And, uh, because my birthday is on Christmas Eve, you know. Look at that. And I love that t-shirt. Look, it says, it says fucking caffeine for Christ's sake. Uh, pretty handsome guy. Big nose. Anyway, uh, yeah, you could see I wasn't shorter back then, eh? And Jeff was, uh, he was a few years younger, that guy. I don't know, early 20s. I don't remember. He had a 77 Buick Sabre Coupe. It was so fucking cool. It was orange with a white top, orange interior, and or uh, sorry, white and orange interior. I mean, psh, too bad again, the frame broke. That's when I started finding out about how the old cars, the frames weren't uh, the most solid. So anyway, so I bought the car and I would keep it at my mom's place in Pierrefonds. And um, here it is here after getting all cleaned up. Not, oh, sorry, okay, sorry, not the best shot. It's I wanted to find, you know, there were a couple of shots I didn't find. I don't know why. Again, in 2000 summer. Here's a nice one. There you go. Looking a lot nicer, looking more spiffy. And actually, that was even, I think, before I gave her the compound cleaning. Hang on. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I think here, this is when I give it the compound cleaning. And compound cleaner, what it does is on a paint surface like that, it cleans it all up and uh, makes it more shiny, gets the oxidization off. Here's the interior. You can see it. The interior showed its age a little bit. Uh, dash there, you can see some wear. I mean, that's where the car showed really its its mileage of like. That's why I believed he had a oh Christ 198. Uh, well, I said 298,000. If not, at least 198,000 because it's just the air, the wear on on stuff like that. Look at the dashboard, the green, you know, and the bright light. This is on a little job with my friend, you know. And yes, okay, I know some of you are thinking, well, did you drive this thing? Yeah, rarely on occasion. It was very rare. I mean, I didn't live nearby, you know, and really just the side streets, you know, once in a very blue moon, uh, you know, uh, regardless, not the fucking license. I listen, chance, in life, you got to take chances sometimes, you know, but no, uh, generally, uh, there were only two other times. I think uh, two other people drove it was Jeff. He drove it a couple of times. My dad drove it at once. And um, you see, I'm talking so much. My voice is like starting to lose me. And... Um, yeah, one time I had actually, uh, I had it legally, I had a transfer sticker on it. So it was really legal to be on the road for like, it's mostly something to go to either to an inspection center or a <coughs> garage for repair, you know. 
And uh, so, uh, and it wasn't sure, and my dad, uh, he drove it, and, but there was a t problem with the timing on the engine. I noticed a couple of times, I started driving, and it, it just cut out. <coughs> so I had to put the car in park and start it up, you know, and, but one time my dad drove, it was like, fuck, minus, I don't know, really, it was cold, minus 10 or whatever, and he, and uh, he drove it, we drove it like two blocks, I was with his girlfriend, and my, my dad goes to step on the gas, and boom, it just quits. And so we had to push it to the side. Luckily, we were near his place, still near his place. He went to go get his Maxima. I came back and boosted my car. So his girlfriend drove back the Maxima to his house, his, his condo. And then, uh, you know, he, 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 we basically drove back in my Buick back to uh, where I kept, ironically, a block away in the driveway of my mom's place, in the back there. So, uh, anyway, again, in Pierrefonds and... <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, my dad, I remember gunning it like crazy to bring it back. He was afraid it was going to stall again, again, because, like I said, the, it was cold. Uh, maybe the car wasn't totally warmed up, but it was really especially also because of the timing on the motor wasn't good. And it needed adjusting. And uh, I remember when he pulled to to stop the car, to stop, he would put the car in, in neutral so it wouldn't stall out. And it's another shot I took of it, you know, uh, after I cleaned it and all that. And uh, here's the buckles. Look at those huge original belt bu belts, seat belts. They were mandatory in 65. That was the first year for that. Okay, I'm getting tired of talking, so I'm going to try to wrap this up quicker here. There she is, all beautiful, gleaming, gleaming beauty. And that's my friend's badass 64 Impala, which later became a, a lowrider, repainted purple metallic, white top. I was totally redone. My friend was just total old school like me. Major love old cars and doo-wop and funk and <coughs> amazing. So this is a year later, I took this picture, I had, unfortunately, my Yashica camera, I used to take these pictures, which was a great camera, got stolen. So, uh, you know, I, I had to buy some, I didn't have a lot of money, so I bought this used Vivitar, but it was defective. So, they're okay pictures, but they're not fantastic. Again, this is in the back of my mom's condo. And then I sold it because I realized, I'm like, this is ridiculous, fuck, you know, I'm like, I'm never going to restore this car, I can't drive legally, I mean, I'm visually impaired, what the fuck's the point, you know? So at the time I started writing uh, articles for Old Auto's newspaper out of Bothwell, Ontario, which was very popular nationwide and then beyond. And I ran an ad, um, maybe with this picture, I'm not sure. And I, I had a guy from Brockville come to look at the car. His name was Jerry, very friendly old guy. Came with his, uh, I don't know, whatever, fucking 97 uh, La Sabre. But it was supercharged. I remember that, that was, that's rare. So he bought my Buick. I sold him for like 950 bucks, which I broke even, by the way. You know, after buying the car for 800 and spending on this and that oil, and I did a whole fucking... I worked on the car, man. I did a whole uh, full uh, uh, tune-up on it. I forgot to tell you, I didn't just clean the hell out of it. I mean, I did. I gave it a tune-up. I spark plugs, uh, spark plug wires, uh, uh, oil, uh, new oil, uh, fucking uh, oil filters, air filter, um, you know, and... Uh, you know, I ran a lot better too. I had to do some carb cleaning on it, obviously. And uh, I, so I sold it to this guy, and he, you know, I don't know, a, a couple of years later or something, or three years later, he's like, he sends me pictures. I called him, he sends me pictures. He restored the whole car. Look at that original color, man. Look at that. Okay, they're not amazing pictures, but still, you know. And and they're released on life keeps going because you can't find these fucking cars ever for sale. They're all driven into the ground. <coughs> why because they were great cars they were great road cars they had a great ride they had power and they rusted and the frames fucking rusted and you know the and the, the brakes were not even adequate enough they're they're drum brakes i mean one time i fucking floored it i was on uh oh my god was it saint regis or something and it was low sun i was like fuck it was a sunday or so it was like no cars driving I fucking floored it I see a stop coming all of a sudden because i'm visually impaired man it's like fuck i almost slammed on the brakes it, it took so much uh, time to stop the car compared to a, a, a modern car, you know, because the disc brakes, they just heat up and they're just inadequate, the disc brakes, you know. Okay, I'm not crazy about this picture, but, you know. But then I saw the car um, when I was on Facebook, you know, and a couple of years ago, I found it. It's still around. The guy still has it. Jerry still has it, man. And I remember I when I talked to him, I was like, dude, I was like, listen. I didn't say dude, you know, he's an old guy. I said, man, I said, if you ever want to sell this car, my God, I got to have back in it. Blew me away when he sent me these fucking pictures right here. Brand new interior. Brand new seat covers. Look at the dash. Perfectly restored. Original. Look at that. Amazing. 
new door panels, new carpeting, new carpeting pad. Look at this. Look at that. That's fucking amazing. And this is this car, if it's still in this condition, like mint, it's worth it could be worth up to fifteen grand. They're not worth that much because it's a four door, you know, but I mean for me it's it's like priceless. And uh, to finish, this is uh, this was Jerry's uh, other car, his other 65 LeSabre wearing, by the way, those are 67 or 68 caps, I think. <coughs> and that was his dad's car. Notice the 85 Delta in the background, but this was his father's car. But he wanted my car because apparently this one he couldn't restore because I think the frame was broken. So there you go, guys. I'm fucking tired of talking. I also am glad I remembered to uh, ask any of you guys to listen. If you own one of these cars, especially if you had one, Tell me, talk to me about it, man. Tell me anything, good, bad, whatever, what you paid for. it. Where's the car? Where, wherever the fuck you are in the world. If you speak French or, or English, I want to hear about it. Look, I forget here. There's one thing I could even show one more thing I didn't even include. Check this out. Back in the 90s when I was building models hardcore, there was this model. This is the closest thing I get to my friend's car that I had. And this is an AMT 66 Buick Wildcat. So 65, 66, same styling, but headlight, uh, grill treatment's a little different. I made this even the same color, uh, you know, interior and all that. And yeah, and uh, in case you didn't see my other videos to finish here. Right here. There it is. There she is. Of course, unfortunately, because of that yellow wall, it's not going to make it look white, though, eh? That was my favorite picture I ever took of that car. Oh, that was a collector car plate, by the way. It was cheaper to plate a car in Quebec with that. But apparently the technicality is you're not allowed to go faster than 90 kilometers an hour on any highway in Quebec. So Anyway, guys, so that's it. And uh leaves you with what's for sale on my walls here. Yeah. This one I just framed. 63, first year. And yes, of course, I'm aware of the new Gladiator pickup. That's why I framed this son of a bitch. Alright guys, so take care. Bye-bye.